Hi. <clears throat> Ever since I was a kid, learning to program for the first time, I wondered if the processes inside myself could somehow be reflected inside the computer I was programming. I wasn't sure if this was possible, but I thought about what it felt like to learn math or to make a new friend or to feel angry at someone. You know, I, I was so hungry for a mirror that could help me understand the things inside myself that I couldn't see yet. I also wanted tools to help the adults who were in charge see the world more clearly and take better care of it. On the slide, I'm showing myself as an MIT freshman. By that point, I still hoped that computers could give us a mirror into our inner lives, but I knew it wouldn't be through the kind of software I learned to program as a kid. That software was just too brittle and rigid and logical. Today's industry AI systems, including neural networks, are impressive. They've made lots of progress, but despite the brilliant engineering and the billions of dollars, they also fail to do what ordinary human children do all the time. So here, we're seeing the view inside the mind of a Tesla behind a horse-drawn buggy, but it can't tell. Is it a car or a truck facing backwards or a person walking behind a truck car? I Talk about buggy. Now, it may be amusing, but it's dangerously confusing. <laughs> Imagine how you would feel if you didn't know what was going on, but like this Tesla, you don't seem to know that you don't know what's going on. So it clearly doesn't understand the world like we do. Today, I'm going to show you new AI uh, that seems to be able to do a little better. And I'll introduce one idea I hope you'll spread, the idea of a probabilistic program. I've been working on probabilistic programs for 15 years. They're a new medium for knowledge representation that synthesizes symbolic, probabilistic, and neural approaches to AI. The key new element compared to modern neural networks that you've been hearing about is the symbolic aspect. What do I mean by symbolic? Well, symbolic representations of knowledge are as old as human civilization. They go back to hieroglyphs or alphabets, numeral systems, musical notation, mathematical formulas expressing physical laws, uh, and even computer source code. Every new symbolic representation that humans have invented has resulted in profound increases in our individual intelligence and our collective intelligence. Now, symbolic software, as I knew as a kid, was too rigid, too binary to model the world outside of us, let alone the world's inside. It wasn't probabilistic enough. And Tesla's neural networks, as we saw, they, they can learn something about where it's probably safe to drive, but they're maybe not symbolic enough. They can't coherently perceive the symbolic object of the buggy right in front of their face. Today, I'll show you probabilistic programs that give us a new symbolic language for expressing uncertain knowledge about possible worlds and the processes by which we can infer them. It's a new medium for knowledge representation. Now, recent progress, uh, especially by many wonderful MIT students in my lab, have helped this field reach an, an inflection point. My child self is really happy to report that developmental psychologists are starting to answer his question, using probabilistic programs to model how the mind learns to see the world in three dimensions and make sense of physical objects and understand the goals of other people and what they want. And in just the last two years, probabilistic programs have started to outperform machine learning systems on tasks such as perceiving the 3D structure of the world, reducing some of the nonsensical errors you saw the Tesla system make, or cleaning and correcting errors in millions of database records from the US Medicare system, or automatically forecasting econo econometric time series. These probabilistic programs understand the world a little more like we do that is, in terms of symbolic representations. Let's see an example. Now, here, I'm showing you data coming in one data point at a time. 
and I'd like you to raise your hand and sketch in the air the pattern that pops into your mind as you see this data. Good. So as time passes, more and more of you raise your hands, and you're maybe forecasting something like a periodic overlay on top of a linear trend. Something remarkable just happened. There was a vast space of possible data sets we didn't see, and a vast space of possible explanations for all those data sets. And somehow, in just a few milliseconds, our minds explored that space and rapidly narrowed down on just ones that were probable. If I'd shown you a different data set, we would have sketched different patterns in the air with our finger. Each picture on this slide is a symbolic representation of an infinite set of probabilistic programs that your mind didn't think of, because it didn't need to. So can probabilistic programming solve this problem? Let's watch. On the right, you're seeing the source code for a probabilistic program. And on the left, in green, you're seeing its finger, the predictions it's making about the patterns that it's inferred. Now, what I'm not showing is what's making the edits. That's another probabilistic program called a metaprogram. You can think of it as the wizard behind the curtain pulling all the strings. It encodes the space of possible explanations and how to explore it efficiently. It's generating and testing variations of the probabilistic program using feedback from the data to improve those inferences. These metaprograms are central to how cognitive scientists are using probabilistic programming to reverse engineer human thinking and learning. In fact, they're also more democratic in some ways than other forms of machine learning. They run in real time on a laptop without a large data set, so even a passionate child can become a leader in probabilistic programming. Unlike hieroglyphs, we can also see that probabilistic programs are not carved in stone. And unlike physical laws, they don't need to encode universal truths that last for all time. And unlike most system software, only the rarest probabilistic programs, those deep metaprograms, are likely to be painstakingly crafted by human hands and minds. Probabilistic programs are a new symbolic form that's writ in water. They're meant to model our flickering dreams, our momentary perceptions of space and objects, our thoughts, our risky bets, and the theories that stitch all those together to constitute the matter of our subjective experience. Now, what happens when the world changes underneath the probabilistic program? The data I showed you, turns out, was airline passenger volume starting pre-2019 and continuing through 2020, when the COVID pandemic caused traffic to drop. Notice how the probabilistic programming approach adjusts and reports sensible uncertainty. Also notice how neural networks find an implausible explanation and are overconfident about it, like we saw with the Tesla. This is important if we want safer, smarter AI that can help us understand our world and take better care of it. We've shown you can learn accurate probabilistic programs from diverse data sources, cancer clinical trials, genetic engineering experiments, salary surveys of software engineers in the US, data from the census. And in all these cases, what I'm showing you are in one color, some of the real data, and in another color, synthetic data from a probabilistic program that was learned. And the two colors look pretty similar. So the probabilistic programs are surprisingly accurate. Now, in high school, it turns out I was that charming kid who wanted the current events class debates to be more seriously grounded in the statistical abstract of the United States. Um, and I won't admit how frequently I still ask my wife uh, to show me a scatter plot when she makes what I think is an empirically testable prediction. But I am proud to admit that with this new AI, my wife and I can settle some of those debates. So let's watch. Um, here in English, what you're seeing is questions in English about salary inequity in the US software industry. First looking at the data, then finding engineers that are probably underpaid, plotting it, and then aggregating by gender identity. 
Now, I see in these results more objective evidence for intersectionality in salary inequity. What's producing these results is a, is a neural network translating from English into a probabilistic program that gives the English a grounded, human-checkable meaning, a symbolic meaning. Over the next decade, I think this AI could help us see our fractured democracy a little more clearly and give us new tools for addressing problems such as income inequality. I mean, I want you to imagine what if we had objective, symbolic, communal maps that characterize our subjective, diverse perspectives, needs, and values that were grounded and updated in light of communal data from the internet. I also want to share some progress going back to the problem my child self was so interested in, about how to make a medium in computers that could help us understand ourselves. Alan Perlis, who is the first Turing Award winner and also the inventor of the first programming language compiler, once famously said, the only constructive theory connecting neuroscience and psychology will arise from the study of software. This sounds like the same idea that was inspiring me as a kid. Now, I've already shown you how probabilistic programs can narrow some of the gap between software processes and mental processes, but many big gaps still remain. For example, neurons are about one million times slower than the digital logic gates inside our computers. Last year, my students created a theory of how spiking neural circuits could actually implement probabilistic programs. We've been running experiments to test this theory to see if it can explain the structure and dynamics of the brain. And we've been led to interesting new accounts for mysteries about the structure and function of, of, uh, of the brain that neuroscientists have been studying for decades. So there's a new link between how symbolic knowledge could be represented in machines and how the brain could actually implement that underneath our experience. Ultimately, I hope that these kinds of probabilistic programs and their mapping to the brain could help us understand how any two of us in this, in this room could look at the same data and experience such different subjective worlds. And as I develop more and more as an adult, I still find myself wanting that mirror. Probabilistic programs coupled to models of the spiking neural activity in my own brain that could help me understand what's going on when I'm stuck learning a math concept or when I'm driving behind a buggy and uh, I get a little angry, convinced that the buggy is the problem, not the fact that I'm in a rush. I also think about people who haven't had the same kinds of loving teachers that I've had. Humans are spending a lot of time helping to develop better AI. But what if we could make AI that understood the world like we do? and that could understand us well enough to help us develop. Thank you. Woo!